Let's face it, Marie McDonald had nothing on Marilyn Monroe, and she might not be as well known as Monroe, but she had more scandals in husbands than most other actresses that came before her combined. So if you've ever read about a golden age starlet and thought their life didn't match their dramatic movies, then Marie McDonald is the real gal for you. So brace up and let's strap in for the life and sad ending of Marie McDonald, Hollywood's original Gone Girl. Early life. Born Cora Marie Fry in Bergen, Kentucky, McDonald was the daughter of Everett Ed Fry and Marie Taboni, who performed in the Ziegfeld Follies. After her parents divorced, she eventually moved with her mother and stepfather to Yonkers, New York. At the age of 15, she began competing in numerous beauty pageants and was named the Queen of Coney Island, Miss Yonkers, and Miss Lowe's Paradise. She dropped out of school at 15. At the age of 15, she dropped out of school and began modeling. In 1939, McDonald was named Miss New York State. Later that same year, she debuted in George White's Scandals of 1939. The following year, at age 17, she landed a showgirl role in the Broadway production at the Earl Carroll Theatre called Earl Carroll's Vanities. Shortly thereafter, she moved to Hollywood, hoping to develop a career in show business. She continued modeling and continued to work for the owner of a Broadway theater as a showgirl at his Sunset Boulevard nightclub. She changed her name from Fry to McDonald. After auditioning for Tommy Dorsey in December 1940, she joined Dorsey and his orchestra on his radio show, and she later performed with other big bands. Dorsey suggested that she change her last name from Fry to her mother's maiden name, McDonald, which she used professionally for the rest of her life. She was known for her buxom build. In 1942, she was put under contract by Universal for $75 a week and immediately appeared in several minor roles. That year, she appeared in three motion pictures, most notably Pardon My Sarong. Marie McDonald's curvaceous shape netted her the nickname The Body Beautiful. Later, Hollywood shortened that moniker to The Body. Knowing McDonald's dark history, calling her The Body becomes all the more sinister. Not good enough. She was eventually dropped by Universal and signed with Paramount Pictures, earning $100 a week. While at Paramount, McDonald appeared in Lucky Jordan 1942. The following year, she was loaned to Republic Pictures, where she co-starred in A Scream in the Dark, a B-detective mystery that met with reasonable success. She found fame as a pinup girl. When the U.S. was deep in the middle of World War II, Hollywood stars were helping the war effort in any way that they could, and McDonald did her part as only the body beautiful could. After posing for a magazine called Yank, McDonald became one of the most popular pinup girls in Hollywood. She fought against being labeled a sex object. Though Marie McDonald relished in the attention, she did eventually get sick of only being known for her physique. She hoped to achieve recognition for her career and talent. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen. Instead, McDonald gained infamy for a series of utterly outrageous scandals that splashed her name across tabloid headlines. She returned to Paramount, where she appeared in supporting roles. In 1944, McDonald co-starred in Guest in the House, in which she received the first positive reviews in her career. Her next starring role came when she was working for independent producer Edward Small as the title character in the 1945 screwball comedy Getting Gertie's Garter. Last but not the least, in 1950, McDonald appeared in Once in a Thief and Hit Parade of 1951, which would be her final films for the next eight years. For the remainder of the 1950s, McDonald focused on theater and music. McDonald reported an LP for RCA Victor in 1957, The Body Sings, backed by Hal Bourne and his orchestra, which consisted of 12 standard ballads. She also toured the world in a very successful nightclub act. She returned to the screen in 1958, when she was cast as actress Lola Livingston in The Geisha Boy, a slapstick comedy opposite Jerry Lewis. She was in the first movie with a full nude scene. In 1963, she made her last film appearance in the sex comedy Promises, Promises opposite Jane Mansfield. Here is the story. In the early 1960s, with the loosening of restrictions around nudity in film, there was suddenly a race to release a movie featuring a fully nude scene with a major star. Marilyn Monroe was supposed to be the first, and even filmed her scene for Something's Gotta Give. 
but after her tragic death, the studio shelved the flick. Into that void stepped a production called Promises Promises, starring Jane Mansfield, who'd take care of the nude scene part, and fellow blonde bombshell Mamie Van Doren. When Van Doren dropped out of the production, McDonald got her part. She got married six times. In 1940, Marie met and fell in love with sports writer Richard Allard. This short union became just the first in the series of tempestuous relationships throughout her life. McDonald and Allard were wed for all of three weeks before they sought an annulment, all for a shocking reason. It's alleged that Donald dumped Allard after she discovered that the diamond on the engagement ring that he gave her was fake. Whether or not that's an overreaction depends on how you feel about diamonds. The marriage was annulled after three weeks. In January 1943, McDonald married her agent, Victor Orsati, in Reno, Nevada. They divorced in May 1947. McDonald's third and fourth marriages were to millionaire shoemaker Harry Carl. They initially married in September 1947. After McDonald suffered several miscarriages, the couple adopted two children, Denise and Harrison. They separated in August 1954 and were divorced that November. On May 23, 1959, McDonald married television executive Louis Bass in Las Vegas. She filed for divorce after 10 months, charging Bass with mental cruelty. On August 6, 1961, she married a banker and attorney, Edward Callahan, in Las Vegas. On September 17, 1962, Callahan filed suit in Los Angeles asking for a divorce from McDonald for mental cruelty or that the marriage to be annulled due to fraud. McDonald married for the sixth time to Donald Taylor in 1963. They met while McDonald was appearing in Promises, Promises, the final film which Taylor produced. They remained married until McDonald's death. Alleged Kidnapping Perhaps the biggest scandal attached to McDonald's name happened in 1957, when it was reported that she'd been abducted. McDonald's mother phoned police, claiming that a man who sounded nervous called her at her home in Woodland Hills, Los Angeles at around 12 a.m. and told her that he had abducted McDonald from her Los Angeles home. McDonald's mother went to her daughter's house and discovered a note in the mailbox instructing her not to call the police and that they would be in touch with her. She was eventually found by the side of the road a day later, but when she spoke to police, her story began to unravel, and an even darker tale emerged. However, after weighing the evidence, the grand jury could not come up with any conclusive evidence to bring charges against anyone. She died at 42. Behind the scenes, McDonald continued to struggle with her addiction to pills, and in 1965, it finally caught up with her. McDonald's sixth husband, Donald F. Taylor, found his wife dead in their home in October of that year. She was just 42 years old. An extensive investigation ensued, and it was suspected that she'd either died of an accidental or intentional overdose of prescription drugs. Eventually, a team of experts ruled that her death was accidental. It was cold comfort for her grieving family, but the story didn't end there. The aftermath of McDonald's death was absolutely brutal for those she left behind. Taylor died by suicide three months later, and McDonald's father suffered from the same fate a little over a year after her passing. Meanwhile, McDonald's three children with Carl were immediately taken in by his then-wife, none other than Debbie Reynolds. From start to finish, Marie's life was the stuff tabloid reporters' dreams are made of as she lives in the hearts of men. And that is it in today's video. If we missed anything in this video, do let us know in the comments below. And for more interesting videos, smash the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.